Hello there, right here, guys. We have the new 1.20 snapshot. This is 22W44A. In it, we have some brand new spawn eggs. We also got changes to mob spawners, TNT, snow layers, and my favorite, the bookshell hopper use. I'll be playing this new snapshot with my viewers on my Twitch live stream. So join me there afterwards. Guys, they added in what I wanted, which was hoppers being able to put books into the bookshelf. So let's go ahead and place some size hopper. Currently have it locked. If we unlock it, look at that. Put some in one by one. And we can also use hoppers to pull the books out one by one as well. So we put something in here that can't go inside the bookshelf. You see, it doesn't go anywhere. So this means we can actually use bookshelves to sort out enchanted books away from other loot, such as like in my piglin bartering farm or in my automatic fish farm without even having to use a lace. This also can be used just to automate the process of putting books back into storage after pulling them out to read what they say. And if you're trying to use the bookshelves to make a secret door, this also makes it nicer to activate it. You can like pull out a book and the door can like open and you don't have to put the book back. You could just like drop it on the floor and have some hoppers pick it up automatically and put it back inside. I'm definitely going to have a lot of fun using this. What other things do you think this could be used for? And using a dropper can also put them in, but not a dispenser. And you could also have the hopper on top. This will work as well. We have some new game rules. We have one that's called Snow Accumulation Height. This can be changed from zero to eight. What this does is determines how many layers the game can actually place snow layers when placed on the ground. So normally in Java, when it would snow, it only placed a single layer. But now we can change this. I set it to eight. And here you can see we got two snow layers. So I can actually accumulate layer after layer. This is how it is actually in Bedrock Edition, which can make some really cool variations and kind of like drifts where the snow accumulates over time. So when set to eight, it can actually go as high as eight layers, which looks the same as a full block. Now for Java, by default, it's still going to be set to one, meaning that we normally get one layer. But if you want to, you can always change it. Now you can also set it to zero, in which case it doesn't add any snow layers at all. This is great if you don't want to have snow landing on your builds. I especially like the look when it piles on the trees. You can see quite a bit of variation. But as you can imagine, over time, eventually it's all going to look exactly the same with a full block. Now, once it does become a full block, it won't add like any more layers on top of it. The next new game rule has to do with explosions. And there's actually three different game rules. The first one's called TNT Explosion Drop Decay. These can be either set to true or false. Now, by default, this one is set to false. What that means is when the TNT explodes, the items around it that get blown up will drop as items if they can. So you shouldn't lose any blocks. Notice how I even got my lever back. The change comes where we can change this to true. Now what happens is anything that's close in TNT will have a less likely chance of actually dropping its block for things that are further away will. Let's go ahead and ignite this and see the results. Once exploded, you can see we end up with less items despite this large hole. Just as a snow game rule, this isn't going to affect survival unless you change this. Now they also have a similar one for mob explosions, and this one's normally set to true. As you probably know, when you have a creeper and it accidentally blows up, the amount of items it leaves behind isn't the same amount as were previously there. And this is why there's things like creeper holes that never get filled in. But if you get tired of that, and let's say you do want to have the creepers drop just as many items as they blow up. You can set this to false. That way, if you do get accidental hole, you can get all the items which normally would drop and you can fill your holes back in again. This might be good for servers that just want to play mostly vanilla, but also don't really want to have items get lost during explosions. And there's a third game rule that's similar to this, which is a block explosion drop delay. Also set to true, similar to the creeper. This has to do with non TNT blocks that can explode, such as like a respawn anchor. So if we set it to false, I'll actually drop tons of blocks, even though the fire will still probably destroy some of the items. Now we all probably know that having a water source in one corner and another one two blocks away will create an extra water source right in between. This next game rule, which is called water source conversion, can change all that. By default, it's set to true, but if we set to false, when we place in two different water sources, they actually don't produce more water. So you got to do some pretty interesting things, such as having this little teeny water source, which pushes everything here to the center. Now there's also a lava version of this, which is normally set to false. But if we set it to true, <laughs> you could probably guess what's going to happen. If we have a lava source here and a lava source here, all of a sudden, they produce another lava source in the middle. Infinite lava, guys. And now we have dripstone points, so we can actually can get infinite lava in survival. But this is kind of a cool way, especially for people like doing builds or something. They just want to fill an area with lava. They can just fill in the corners and it'll spread across just like water does. What other things do you think these can be used for? 
You guys might all remember this one. When it comes to events that are heard all throughout the Minecraft game, such as like somebody killing the Ender Dragon, this can be quite loud to all the other players on the server who are all forced to hear this. That's exactly where this next one comes into. There's a game rule called Global Sound Events. This is typically set to true so that everybody on the server will hear when like the dragon dies, but you can go ahead and set it to false. Which is exactly what I'm going to do on our testing server because oh my goodness I'll be testing something during my stream. Somebody will kill the Ender Dragon and then all of a sudden I have to hear that insane noise of the Ender Dragon dying. I mean in general I really wish they would rework the music and the sounds. We should have like maybe a button that lets you go into more details where you can individually change stuff because some stuff like the bosses like the dragon and the wither are just so much louder than anything else and so is stuff like pistons droppers and tnt and i actually had a data pack made to reduce the noises of pistons and droppers and tnt just because they are so much louder than anything else in the game we also got some new changes to the creative menu here First up, they came out with the Iron Golem Spawn Egg. Rather than having to go into my special shulker box, which actually has a lot of different spawn eggs that aren't in the creative menu, including had one for Iron Golems, which I don't need anymore. They also came in one for the Snow Golem, and they made sure not to make it just pure white. The egg itself has a little bit of bluish in it, because there's a bit of tint of blue in the actual snow. You can see that they're trying to make it so that these white eggs don't match the other white ones so you can tell them apart. And actually slightly tweaked the polar bear spawn egg so it wouldn't be mistaken with the gas. So this one's a polar bear one. It's a little bit darker white and the gas is a little bit whiter white. Overall, I still think that they should try harder at making unique colors so you can easily distinguish the different eggs without actually having to read the names. But these changes are definitely in the right direction. They also came out with the dragon spawning as well as the wither, but they don't show up here in the creative menu. So if you type in give the player dragon, you can see we now have another option, which is called ender dragon spawn egg. Look at that thing. <laughs> that thing looks amazing. It's black and purple, just kind of like the actual dragon egg. And if you right click it, you can summon in the dragon. You can also do this exact same thing for the wither spawn egg which is different than like the wither skeleton. Look at that guys. Oh, I love that blue color. It looks very nice. And they also got the black for the wither as well. And yes, it produces withers. Those two eggs just look amazing. So the reason they didn't put these in the credit menu because they didn't want someone to accidentally get the eggs and place them down and destroy their worlds as you can see the dragon will remove blocks. By the way, if you guys haven't seen how we actually use the dragon in quarries in the overworld, check out this video afterwards. But be sure to do it in your survival world before they patch it. In the spawner egg tab, they also came out with changes to the monster spawner. It used to be called mob spawner, but now they change the name to make it same as what it is in the bedrock edition. Notice when you place it down, it doesn't have a pig inside of it by default anymore. It also won't emit any fire particles by default either. If you hover your mouse over top of it, it'll tell you how to use it as well. It says interact with spawn eggs, sets mob type. So if we follow instructions and we right click spawn eggs onto them, you can see then all of a sudden we can see the mob inside as well as we get the fire particles. So then they'll start working. We can also pick block mob spawners. Now pick blocking normal will get you the default spawner. But if you use control and your mouse middle click button, that's how you get the special type. And once we do that, they'll automatically retain the mob which is inside them. So now we can just go ahead and place down this new spawner and always have a frog inside of it. This is great for testing or building. This week we've also seen further changes to the creative menu and they said that this might be the final changes that they make to it. Personally I think they should wait a little while and continue to make changes on people's feedback because I know I've been playing a lot of snapshots and I still haven't got to all the different types of items in it. What are your guys' thoughts? I think most people who use it can agree that's way better than what it used to be. Now one big improvement is in the redstone tab they added in what is normally only items you can get with commands. Now these will only appear up in this tab if you're opt in your world. It includes the command blocks, the jigsaw block, structure void, barrier, the lights, as well as the debug stick. There still is no structure block in this. But luckily I still got my saved hotbar here, which has everything laid out so I can easily test stuff very efficiently. If you want a hotbar like mine, I have a link in my Discord so you can actually download it into your world. In addition, they also fixed some problematic bugs. That is, you can hear the player walking when it goes over top of carpets, lily pads, and amethyst buds, as well as walking through the sprouts, the lichen, and the roots. 
Despite camels having the ability to walk over one and a half blocks, they weren't actually doing this on their own. And now they will be able to. Something I noticed while playing with the bamboo is that their gaze were missing textures in different areas, which has now been added in. If you give a camel slow falling, they would walk extremely slow to the point you could almost not tell that they were actually walking at all. It looks like they're skidding across the ground. So they resolved this. The new bamboo slabs weren't actually burning when caught on fire, but now they will. Similar problem when it came to the actual bamboo stuff going into the furnaces, some of the new stuff wouldn't be used as fuel, so now you can use all the different types of bamboos to actually cook stuff in your furnace. And if you just use bamboo, you can get four charcoals, but if you make them into blocks, you can get six in case you have any extra left over. They fix it so you can no longer have that change of FOV where your player seems like he's sprinting when riding mobs. Even though you would breed up two turtles, once they would actually lay an egg, it was possible to go ahead and breed the second turtle once again. So now there's an added cooldown. They also corrected some grammar errors within the game. If you want to recreate a world similar to the one you already have and you click the recreate button. Even if you would come in here and actually remove all of the world seed, when you would create the world, it would actually still use the same seed. With fix, now you can have random seeds with the similar worlds. They also fixed the crash, which would occur when players would use the escape key to get out of the player report thing. Coming up with crazy stuff using the new features is what I do best, and I'm doing that right now over at my Twitch. Or see my newest video where we found more crazy glitches to do with the Ender Dragon. Or check out this playlist about other tricks I found in 1.20. Don't forget to join my Discord community where you can get sneak peeks on what I'm working on next. I've been having a lot of fun playing 1.20 with you guys, and thank you so much for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye